So are you in the market for wool Persian rugs, but maybe you're feeling confused about all the different options that you have, like all the different types and designs, and what is even the benefit of having wool Persian rug? Well, what if I told you that there's a guide that will walk you through this entire process step by step? Well, I'm Sean with Catalina Rug, and in this video, we're gonna do just that. We're gonna do a nice overview of wool Persian rugs and go over the most important things that you need to know to help you uh, clear up some of your questions so you're feeling less confused, and then that way you can feel confident as you begin your journey into the world of wool Persian rugs. All right, so first, before we get started, let's go ahead and do an overview of what this guide is gonna look like because we are gonna be covering a lot of different topics when it comes to wool Persian rugs. So the first thing we're gonna cover is benefits of the wool material in Persian rugs so you can understand how this material and how these type of rugs will benefit you. After that, we'll go ahead and talk about the production process of a wool Persian rug from the beginning to end. And of course, we'll do this briefly and do a nice overview of it so you just understand how these rugs are made. Then we're gonna go ahead and talk about the different types and designs of wool Persian rugs that are available so you understand the types of options that you have. Then once we do that, we'll briefly talk about the factors that will affect the quality of wool so you know better what kind of quality wool is out there and how to tell if the rug that you have or the rug that you're thinking about buying has good quality wool and then finally we'll wrap up with how to take care of your wool persian rug if you already own one or if you're planning to buy one so that way it'll last for generations so if you're interested to learn about all of that stick around and all that is coming up now all right, now let's go over the important benefits of having a wool piled Persian rug. So the first thing is that wool Persian rugs feel really great to walk on. Because of the texture of wool, it feels very soft. So whether you're walking on it with bare feet or you're laying on top of it, it just feels very comfortable. Another thing is that wool is generally a low maintenance material. So it's very sturdy and also a stain resistant. That means that you just don't have to spend as much time taking care of it. Also, because of the natural properties of wool, it's really great at absorbing dyes when it's initially going through that process. So you can expect that your wool Persian rug is gonna have really nice vibrant colors for many, many years to come. So also wool has natural insulation properties and it does a good job at regulating your room's temperature. So this is especially helpful during the cool winter times. You'll notice the difference when you lay down a wool Persian rug in your home, it's just gonna feel warmer and cozier. And also for those who have uh, allergies, wool has natural hypoallergenic properties. So it does a good job at trapping dust particles. So that can definitely help you out. So now let's do a brief overview of the production process for wool Persian rugs. Basically, how are wool Persian rugs made? So the first step is of course, they have to source the wool. And they do this by shearing the sheep using specialized uh, shearing tools. And this process is usually done during the springtime because the wool that's sheared during the springtime from the sheep is usually the best quality. So the second step is washing and carting the wool. So during this step, one of the first processes is called scoring where the dirt and impurities are removed from the wool. Then the wool goes through a process called carbonizing where the fibers are softened and whitened. And then after that, the wool goes through a carting machine where the fibers are aligned and also any remaining impurities are removed. So the third step is spinning and plying the wool yarn. So what they do here is they take the clean wool and then they spin it into a wool yarn. And they do this by either using a manual wheel or they do it by hand. And then taking the individual uh, threads from the spun wool, they start twisting them together to create thicker strands of wool, which is more durable and stronger. And then the wool is now ready to be dyed. So in the fourth step, this wool yarn is dyed. And we're not gonna get into the details of the dyeing process, but basically the wool yarn is either dyed with natural dyes, such as vegetables, plants, or flowers, or it can be dyed even with chemicals depending on the type of colors that they're trying to create in the wool yarn. Now we reach the fifth step and this is where everything starts coming together in the knotting of the rug. And of course, this is the longest part of the process. 
So at this stage, the weavers, they take the prepared wool, which has already died, and they start knotting the, the rug, knot by knot, thousands of knots. So they do the knots either using the Persian knot or the Turkish knot, and they either follow a blueprint, which is the case for rugs that are made in workshop and cities, or they do it by memory, which is the case for rugs made in villages and tribes, which we'll talk more about later. And what you should note about this part of the process is that, of course, because there's thousands of knots involved in creating the rug, this process could take anywhere from several months to even years, depending on the level of detail of the design of the rug, as well as how large the rug is. All right, now we reach the final step of the process, which is finishing the rug. So during this step, once the rug weavers are done knotting the rug, they remove the rug from the loom and then they shear the rug to give it a nice surface, uh, which is uniform and even. And then the rug is sent for professional rug cleaning. And during that step also, it could be set out in direct sunlight to settle down the colors if the colors of the rug are too strong. Then after that, there's a final step of trimming any excess fibers and giving the rug a nice finished look. And then finally, there's quality control measures that take place, which involves inspecting the rugs and looking for any imperfections or any issues. And once that is complete, the rug is sent to the market for sale. If you're enjoying this content and want to learn more about Persian rugs, then I invite you to like and subscribe and turn on your notifications because we put out videos just like this every week related to everything you need to know about Persian rugs. All right, so next let's do an overview of the different types and the different design options that you have when it comes to wool Persian rugs. And also keep in mind, if you wanna learn more about any of these options, we have created detailed videos discussing each one of these types and each design in depth. So definitely you can look those up to learn more. All right, so the first thing you should know about wool Persian rugs is that they're typically broken down into three different categories, which are traditional rugs, village rugs and tribal rugs so first let's discuss traditional persian rugs so traditional persian rugs are typically made in cities and a lot of times they're made inside workshops now these workshops could be very famous so for example there's the alabaf workshop or persian rug co workshop or maybe not so famous and what you should know about traditional Persian rugs is that usually they have the highest knot density and they have pretty standardized designs. And usually the, the craftsmen, the rug weavers that work on these are very experienced. And also there's designers involved in making the rugs. Some of the examples for traditional Persian rugs include uh, Tabriz, Kashan, uh, Kerman, Nain, Esfahan. So those are the different cities that make traditional Persian rugs and those are pretty famous types of traditional Persian rugs. Also something else that you should note about traditional Persian rugs is that they usually come in the widest variety. So whether you're looking for different colors, different sizes, or different designs, traditional Persian rugs have the most amount of options out of these three categories. So next let's go over the village Persian rugs. So village Persian rugs are somewhere in between the tribal Persian rugs and traditional Persian rugs that are made in cities. So the village Persian rug weavers usually have more access to tools compar compared to the tribal rug weavers, but less compared to the traditional rug weavers, which are in the cities. And what you'll see in village Persian rugs is that a lot of times they use geometrical designs and also that their designs are typically done by memory and they don't use blueprints as much as city Persian rugs. Some example of village Persian rugs include uh, Hariz, Bakhtiyari, uh, Qarajib, and Azerbaijan rugs. And then you have tribal Persian rugs. So tribal Persian rugs are made by the nomadic tribes in Iran. And because of their nomadic nature, these weavers usually are using more compact looms so they could still move around. And so compared to the village or traditional Persian rugs, most tribal rugs are gonna be smaller in size. And also uh, most of the designs and patterns you'll find in tribal rugs are gonna be more geometrical. And of course, a lot of them are made by memory. They don't use any blueprints like the traditional Persian rugs. So some examples of tribal Persian rugs include Baluchi, 
Torquemon and Qashqai. And what you should know is that each of these names is named after the nomadic tribe that makes them. All right, so next let's talk about the options that you have when it comes to the designs of wool Persian rugs. So there are three major popular options. One of them is the floral design, and then there's the geometric design, as well as the harati design, for example, like the rug that's behind me here. So when it comes to these design, each option usually comes with two different patterns. Either you could have a medallion pattern like the rug behind me. So for example, this is a harati medallion rug because it has a central center medallion. Or you could have an all over pattern. So for example, when it comes to floral all over design where it has a more flowery look to it and the, these flowers and the floral design is spread out evenly throughout the rug and the same goes with geometrical rugs you could either have medallion or all over pattern so besides these three popular options there's of course a lot more other options in wool Persian rugs so for example there is the pictorial design there is a prayer design garden panel design hunting design and many many other options and if you want to learn more about the different types of designs that are available and see a bunch of different examples, again, we have a lot of videos that we created getting in depth about this topic. So definitely check that out. All right, so next let's talk about the factors that will impact the quality of wool in wool Persian rugs. And really the most important factor is where is the region that the wool is coming from? So uh, regions that are higher in elevation usually produce the best type of wool. Usually this wool is gonna be thicker and oilier, and this will also impact what kind of food that the sheep are grazing on depending on their region. So of course, the better the quality food, the better the quality of the wool is gonna be from the sheep. Uh, some examples of high quality wool is wool that comes from Manchester, as well as New Zealand wool and Ghazna wool. So some of the other factors that impact the quality of wool is of course, which season was the wool sheared? And we talked about this earlier, basically the springtime is the best time for the wool to be sheared from the sheep. Also, another thing is if the wool is hand spun, it's gonna be better than machine spun wool because hand spun wool produces finer and softer threads. And finally, what you wanna avoid is wool that is sheared from dead sheep because this wool is gonna be very dry and is usually used to produce the cheaper rugs. So finally, let's go over how to take care of your wool Persian rug. Whether you already own some of these beautiful works of art or you're planning to buy one, or maybe you're just curious, how do you take care of them? Here we're gonna go over some tips that'll help you make sure that these rugs last for generations. So just like anything else on the floor of your home, you have to vacuum wool Persian rugs every few weeks to keep out the dust and the dirt. Also, you have to protect these rugs from extended period of time in direct sunlight because over many years, this could start fading some of the colors. So you do this by using your curtains during the peak sunlight hours. And also you have to protect them from heavy furniture and you do this by using rug padding and also coasters that go underneath the furniture to help cushion the weight of the furniture on the rug. Also another concern that often comes up when it comes to taking care of wool Persian rugs is what to do when a stain happens. And what we recommend is just taking care of it as soon as it happens. The faster that you react, the less likely that it's going to actually stain the rug. And that's why here at Cavalino Rug, we provide an emergency stain removal kit with every purchase so you can take care of it right away. And when it comes to professional rug cleaning, this is something that you can do every four to five years, depending on the usage of the rug, but it's very infrequent, but that option is always there as well. So this concludes our video guide on wool Persian rugs. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and hopefully you're feeling more confident as you start your journey into the world of these beautiful hand knotted works of art. Also, I invite you to check out our website, catalinarug.com. You can look up our wool Persian rugs collection there to look at all the different options that you have and learn more. And you can watch our beginner's guide on how to buy a Persian rug or you could binge on our playlist for types of Persian rugs 101 where we discuss all the different types of Persian rugs there. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, I invite you to like and comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.